See, we would go into a plane with our suitcases and land on a, on a German airport not knowing where to go. Yeah. Hi y'all, welcome to this week's vlog and we're going to get right into answering questions, the biggest questions about the Romaiki family deportation. But we do want to just say that welcome back to Lydia and Riker in this week's vlog. Uh, Lydia's doing great. Riker is, is growing, is very healthy and eating sleeping and peeing and pooping a lot but we're getting used to that we've had he's a lot also, of help it has been amazing he's also smiling a lot more which is so sweet now oh, yes. when he hears trace my voices he'll smile it's oh so yes cute. it is it has been incredible all right right into the questions about the deportation uh let's get right into why is liddy not automatically exempt from being deported since she married a u.s citizen and has a now 14 day old little boy that is also a U.S. citizen. Since the Romaiki family came here seeking asylum, uh, their case is a little, little different. Uh, when me and Lily got married last year, we hired an immigration lawyer right after we got married and we have been actively trying to get her citizenship through the proper channels. But we actually need a court, the court in Memphis to reopen her family's asylum case and then pull her out of it and then we can proceed through the proper channels. So that is the hold up, but we have been working on that actively since we've got married. It's just a lot more complicated in my case. It's a lot more complicated, but we're- we... So it's two separate things that we're doing. Yes. It's the pulling me out of my family's case, as well as applying for- uh, I-130. A... So. Yeah. We have done both those things. Now it's just up to the government and the court. But every lawyer will tell you it takes months and months and months and years and years. So it's not ever a quick process. It's a very long process. But it is something that we have been doing ever since we got married. And just because marrying a citizen and having a kid does not mean she's just exempt from that and from the deportation. Uh, right now, the court did deny our first attempt to reopen the case and pull Liddy out but we are working on that with our immigration lawyer. They are still actively pursuing and trying to get them to reopen the case. So that is something that right now the government has not done, but we, will, we do not know. We are just continue praying and hoping that they do. I feel like the best way to explain that is there's a ton of cases that each court has, and then the smaller ones that aren't high on their priority list often get declined. You have to re-ask, re-ask, re-ask. So the first time that we ask, they decline. And so we're going to have to re-ask in a little bit again and just do that over and over again until they finally accept it. But yeah, it is a smaller case. And so they just aren't very interested in dealing with it. Yes. I have the special Mr. Uwe Remaki, uh, and we're trying to just clarify all the I guess the comments and the questions going on around the Romaki family of just the basic questions, why they chose asylum, what have they been doing for the past 15 years, what would happen if they went back to Germany. So let me get right into these, but just starting it off, Mr. Romaki, question number one is, what was the original reason for your family seeking asylum in the U.S.? Yeah, first of all, hello to you all, and I'm Trace's father-in-law. And with our family, in 2008, we came to the United States and applied for asylum uh, with the help of HSLDA, Homeschool Legal Defense Association, because uh, when we started homeschooling in Germany in 2006 and homeschooled for two years, we had so much trouble uh, with the authorities that we couldn't stay in the country anymore. It started out with the police coming to our house, dragging the kids to school, crying, and then they started uh, with increasing fines daily for each parent, each uh, school-aged child, to, uh, to the amount of more than $10,000. And when we did not pay, we had to go to court and uh, talk about the reasons why we would homeschool and why we would not send our children into a public school and so we did that and they wouldn't 
understand and hear our reasons, they would just say, well, you have to stop and send them back. Now, we knew of other families that where one or both of the parents had to go to jail. And then when uh, they threatened us with loss of custody because of uh, homeschooling our children, and when we learned that they had changed the laws into that they could just, without even a court order, come to your house, take the children away from you, we decided, or not just decided, we, we just, we simply couldn't live there anymore. It was just such a fear, everyday fear of what might happen that day. And we actually got to talk to families where they took uh, several of their children away to custody, they never saw them back. They were mm. hiding one child that they could keep, but all the others were gone and uh, we couldn't bear that. So we started looking around into other countries, but since in Europe uh, you cannot go very far and then you have to speak a different language, there were not too many options that we were left with. Actually, also for financial reasons, uh, there was no way in Europe, so we looked overseas. We thought about uh, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and all of these countries. It would have taken years to get even a visa, and we didn't have much time. We knew we had to leave right away. Then we got a phone call from HSLDA and asking how we were doing and when I told our story uh, they, they asked us if we would be willing to come to the United States and applying for political asylum. So that was a new thought for us. We never thought as Germans we would ever have to apply for asylum in, a, in another country. But uh, since they said they would help us with the whole process and guide us through everything, we accepted because we really had no other choice. We, we had to leave. And that's how it all got started. Just to clarify for everyone, why did you choose to homeschool your children over having them in the public school? Because you did have them there for a little bit. Yes, Daniel, our oldest son, and Lydia, who you all know, um, they both were in public school for two and three years. And during those years, they actually changed, their whole personality changed, mm. that even the neighbors would come to our house and ask, what, what's going on with Daniel? He used to be so such a happy, open child and would come to us and talk to us. And now he always seems to be sad and, and withdrawn and doesn't really speak or talk much anymore. What's going on? So. Then, then we had Lydia, and she, after being in the public school for a while, she started having regular headaches and stomach aches, and uh, we went to doctors to find out what's going on, and they wouldn't find any physical reason. So it must have been just, according to what they said, a psychological or a, you know, reason or being fearful of something. So yeah. we then found out from her that uh, her classmates were kind of a violent type and uh, during recess time throwing rocks and sticks and uh, it was just an environment for her where she did not feel loved or comfortable. She was afraid of going to school. Daniel had all the bullying going on. So we saw already something is wrong with public schools. And then uh, since in Germany, Homeschooling is not known at all. There are just a few families that are homeschooling their children, and we didn't know about it. But then uh, a lady talked to my wife about how our kids were doing at school, and, and then she mentioned, yeah, they're actually parents teaching their children at home. So that was the first time we even heard about it, and we then read about it online to find out if that's something we could do as parents to help our children. And after the summer break, in 2006, we then started, uh, yeah, and we had maybe one or two days of freedom of homeschooling, and then all the problems started. Damon hey, took your children out of the home. You do believe this is your religious freedom to homeschool? Yes, not just religious freedom. I think it's it's a parental right. I think, you know, of course, I, I believe God gave us children, right. but we as parents are responsible for their upbringing, the way they are raised, and we as parents love our children, so a parent should have the right to do what they see as best for their children, whether it is homeschooling them or putting them in a private school or whatever. This is uh, a right that, a, that you as parents should have and not a right that's given to the, uh, the government. We as parents are responsible 
even before God, we are responsible uh, for their upbringing. God trusted us with children, and we want to raise them before God in the right way. Well said, well said. All right, so right into another question. What would happen to the Romaiki family and to y'all if you were forced back to Germany? Yeah, I mean, of course, we don't know exactly what would happen, but, but we know what happened when we, before we left. So all this would uh, likely be coming back because our two youngest children who were born here in the United States, uh, they still have five to seven years of school left. So if we homeschooled them in Germany, we would face the same kind of persecution and the government is really trying to crush down, financially crush families who are homeschooling and emotionally crush them and uh, coerce them into following their rules, which we would, of course, not follow when we homeschool. So we would face fines, we would face the police coming again to take the children, we would face the loss of custody of our children, we would face uh, losing business that we built up and, and all of that would come back at us. And again, others are jailed for time. So all this would come back. And in addition to that, that especially for the older children who were brought up here and have their high school diplomas through homeschooling, that all would not be recognized by the German government and universities. They could not get any higher education. They would probably not even get a job because if you don't have a uh, recognized a diploma in Germany, you don't even get a, a good job. So that would for them be hard. If, and also they don't know the uh, German language as well anymore after 15, yeah, 15 years. years. This has they, been your home. This is right. where you go to church. This is where you have jobs. Right. Carson Newman, piano teacher. This is the last 15 years. This has been it. We have all our friends here. There's almost no family in, from my side, no family in Germany. Uh, so we wouldn't even know. See, we would go into a plane with our suitcases and land on a, on a German airport not knowing where to go. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't want that. No, of course not. So let me also just clarify something else. And when the government denied your asylum and then they came out the next day and gave the Romaki family deferred action status where they could stay here indefinitely if they st did not do anything illegal and applied with Homeland Security and went to, had order of supervision. Uh, did they ever mention anything about, well, when your kid is 18, then you're gonna have to get back, you're gonna have to go back to Germany. So in your mind, have you been thinking this whole time that, oh, right when our kids are 18, you have to go back to Germany? That, that's no, a false statement, true? It was never. We have no, never heard of that. Yeah, so the thing is, when they said you could stay here indefinitely, that's what you were led to believe. Right. And I, I want to, I, I don't know if that's something that is not clear, but I want to say that we first were granted asylum by uh, an immigration judge who heard our situation, and he granted us asylum based on what we went through and uh, based on parental rights, and that America stands for liberty, for freedom, and oh, he yes. granted us asylum. So it was, it then turned out to, or seemed to be more like a political issue when it was then overturned later on. But initially we were... Granted. Right. So just to clarify all this thing, and people saying they're illegal, the family came here lawfully, they have done everything lawfully like the government has asked them to do, and they've stayed here for the past 15 years lawfully and doing exactly what Homeland Security and the government asked them to do. And this is something that came out of the blue that was unexpected, especially from back when the court said or the government said they could stay here indefinitely. So this is out of the blue. We also have other questions asking why the Romaki family have not tried to get citizenship another way in the 15 years they've been here in the U.S.? Yes, so since we came here as asylum seekers, and then when that went through the courts and eventually was then turned down, there is for us no other way of um, becoming American citizens other than that once our children become citizens or are citizens and old enough, like our uh, two daughters, they were born here, or the older children that are married here and eventually become citizens uh, that we through them may become citizens of the United States, but as asylees or as asylum seekers that were eventually denied, we have legally no way to... Uh, you can't even apply for a green card or anything like that. Right, but 
then since we followed all what they told us to, and they said or told us that we would not be deported, uh, we felt safe yes. for many years. Because that's what the government said. They said yes. you could stay here indefinitely. There right. was no stipulations. There was no other things to say. Right. Oh, if your kids are 18 or if this in 15 years. No, the government stated they could stay here indefinitely if they stayed out of legal trouble. And they have done that. They have been the most law-abiding people, like I said earlier. These are great people that love the Lord, that love their community, that help out in their community. Mr. Romaki does a, a lot for the community. The whole family does. This is people that are good for America and are being told they need to leave the country for no reasons after they have been applying everything and doing everything right that the government has asked them to do. So how can you help the Romaki family? We have a link right now in our description to HSLDA with the action plan and what we're trying to do to get the Romaiki family to stay. So you can sign the petition. We're trying to get 100,000 signatures by October 11th. Also, we are asking people to contact their Congress. We're asking the representatives to support the bill HR 5423. And if you would just tap on the link that's in the description, it will take you directly to the website where you can see all the action plans and you can do everything from there. So if you would like to help, as so many have offered and asking comments, what can we do? We would really appreciate if you just tap on that link and go over there. Yes, thank you so much. So hopefully that answers y'all's biggest question about the family's deportation. And we are doing everything in our power and I'm doing everything in my power to keep my wife here and their family here and just continue to pray for our family and for us. Thank you so much for so supporting us over YouTube the last year. It has been uh, a fun ride and it's been incredible and I cannot wait to continue. And little Riker, he is, he is doing great. He is a, a big eater. He eats a lot. <laughs> but we just want to thank everyone for watching our vlog. Please, I'm going to put multiple links down in the description about the family's case and about how you can help and where you can go to do that so please check that out thanks everyone for watching this week's vlog and hopefully it answered your questions we'll see you next week with probably Riker's first newborn shoot it'll be a fun video it will be fun thank you for watching later y'all bye